tell people more about the advantages of our product. They never lose their cool. Expand your mind. But I've got a better source of information. Dirty. Yeah, 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 Dirty 30, Beat Down Brown, Cousin Eddie in the house. What's going on, Cousin Eddie? Talk to me, man. We here? Talk to me. Hey, nice chill week right now going into this right here, man. Nice little Memorial chill weekend. Day weekend, you know, if for those who got that extra day off, salute to you. But if you don't, my heart goes out to you and, uh, hey, man, keep on keeping on. Yeah, you know it, man. You know it. So uh, we got... A glorious celebration of um, black excellence going on yet again. And then we got nigga moments. So let's get into it. Let's we shine, go. man. We shine in so many different sectors, <laughs> man. We, you know how we do. You know, we got a, you know, a yin and a yang, you know, on everything. But uh, yeah, let's get into it, man. All right. So uh, Killer Mike is... Uh, once again, it's a Kennedy, another one of our illustrious MCs that's joined the National Symphony, Symphony Orchestra at the Kennedy Center to perform the Michael album. So um, that's crazy. I did catch a couple clips from it. Did you um, catch any of the clips? See what was cracking with that right there? No, man? I didn't catch any clips. I just caught, you know, the fact that he was getting that nod uh, to be able to rock like that. And that's going to be interesting because of the sound that Mike has, you know. Um, I saw the one with uh with Nas, which was epic, but uh, this is dope. You know, I'm glad Mike is getting his uh his flowers, man. This I, saw the, very dope. I, saw the, I saw the Nas one, I saw the common one, mm -hmm. and both of those were pretty solid. Right. Um the clips I saw of this one, because it actually happened already on the 21st. Okay. So okay. it's already it's already occurred. I saw two separate clips, um, one extended and one shorter. So um Anybody that doesn't get what's going on here, National Symphony Orchestra sits back and performs the instrumental track for artist period. So, I mean, it usually was reserved operatic at first, mm -hmm. and um, then it went from that to, you know, certain rock or, you know, R&B acts and then, you know, pop acts. And so then with Nas and Common getting involved, then it became where they brought hip hop to the building. And yeah. it was it was dope. But now um Killer Mike, like you said, that sound and how it was set up is like, okay, how's this gonna work? Right. So just letting you know of the setup and I don't want any copyright infringement. So I'm not gonna bring up any of the clips, even though I should have checked deeper in with it being the Kennedy Center and being the National Symphony Orchestra. It might have been one way, but I don't know because it's still, it's his music. But whatever the case being, he's got like a five-piece choir behind him. You know, mm. they're like they're in the robes like that, and they did a couple costume changes. But um, he opted out of the tux. Homeboy was uh, t-shirt and jeaned out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I think he might. I think he might have suited up for the second half, but for the okay. first half where I saw him, you know, homeboy, he was comfortable. He was, he was comfortable. comfortable. His t-shirt yeah. jeaned up. He yeah. got his bass player and his guitar player sitting there too. Okay. So to keep the Sonics, okay. and then you got the whole orchestra behind them, and it was it was fire, man. Okay. Um, you know, I. I I didn't see a keyboardist off top in the in the back of my head looking at something like um, scientists and engineers, mm -hmm. and um, no, I didn't see any guest appearances, so no three stacks, no future popping up. But um, it would have been interesting just to hear going full orchestra on scientists and engineers. That would have been I, that's why I was just like with a live band that song alone, just the <laughs> intro with with three stacks. Yeah. That whole like how how I would I'm curious to see we're how placing, how they we're placing that. the synthesizer with the string plugs. Yes, yes, Ooh. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that'd have, been, that'd have been fire. Yeah, I, I'd have been a little kid right there. I'd have been. This is this is where being a music nerd on a different level changes yep. up. Like, oh, so you switched this out for this with and that. this and this. Yep. Yeah, but um, what I what I saw was fire, man. I had no um, I had no qualms about it, man. It was it was all right. I was I was digging it. This is a big thing, and like I said before, Nasa Common have both done it and rock with it. Um, even um, 
with Nas doing a live event in Madison Square Garden, um, that was crazy. Watching people change up orchestra, um, the Dilla tributes from um, the Philharmonic and all that other stuff where classic they go and flip his catalog like that. These types of event and appreciating the artistry yeah. of hip hop because it's I get into these arguments all the time with people who are displaced with the culture or only look at the culture one way. Mm -hmm. And um, we mess around and we clown about in the chat, you know, people with the current climate, with the dish just going on, with the big, with the beef just ringing off. Mm -hmm. um, such a distraction or why is it this or why is it that or whatever? It's like, okay, y'all don't like it because there's rappers, but you know, the fact that, you know, Mariah and Aretha Franklin was talking greasy about each other, that was celebrated and looked at a certain way. You know, they only see one aspect of it. They don't get to see the breakdown. You know, my my first thought was when I heard about Killer Mike getting a nod for this was yeah, how would they how are they gonna switch instruments? Cause certain things you you know wasn't in the lab when they were making those songs or whatever. It's like, so how are you gonna put this on the instrument? You know, because yeah. most of everything is digital, and for them to make the you know flip the script and you know, shout out to the orchestra as well for being able to pull that off. It ain't just Mike. You know what I mean? You got these cats that's got to, you know, they got sheet music now. It's like, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. We got to, we got to transpose this. You know, how the hell? Okay, I got Killing. it. I think I got Killing. something for this. Wait, wait. You know. how, how am I going, how am I going to do trap drums on the timpani? <laughs> 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 See, they don't, they, they looking at the beef stuff. We could look at track for track and how they're going to lay this whole thing down and how everything is going to mesh. You know, it's, it's a whole nother level. If you, if you pay attention to what's going on, it's a beautiful thing, you know, just like how they score movies. You know, I was always interested in, you know, when I watch movies, especially going to school for the stuff or whatever, my ears are just crazy tune now like i can't watch like star wars and jurassic park without tweaking about how the mix sits you know I and for them to do it in real time dude that's that's beautiful go ahead dude, like you said looking at how stuff is mixed looking at how um shout out to my homeboy big mike again we often have times have these conversations at work you know discussing music or whatever but we we're talking about um with the complexities of hip-hop certain sections how they produce an album versus how another city coast or whatever produces albums and the emotions exactly. going along in it exactly with, oh i'm only going to sit on this chord progression because i literally want to paint this picture before i put words to it mm -hmm. and um like you said mixing something shout out to vince staples on that new album man because that new album first of all he mastered it quiet you got to really listen to that album nice. I, I, I went through a bunch out. I, I went I went through a bunch of albums and I noticed and I thought something was wrong. You know, we're in that age now. We listen to a lot of stuff through our phones and our earbuds and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, I didn't turn my stuff up. No, he mixed that quiet on purpose. I nice. want you to hear everything. And I don't want nice. nothing to be too boomy, too nothing. I want you to hear every word, every instrument, whatever. That's artistry, man. That's thinking about the listener. That's thinking about the listening experience. And like you said, going through these tones like killer mike when when we listened to that album we said this album was epic we said this album was big this album was with the choirs with the orchestration even in the digital space yes it was like this isn't just some sit back and bang it out in your jeep type album even though it did not yes even though album did not it wasn't that type of album. So to see it go on the grand stage like this with a full on Philharmonic behind them. Yeah, it was it was definitely was chilling in a positive way. You know, it's and crazy it when was, I have to cut you off, fam, but you know, it's crazy mm -hmm. when he was telling about building his album, how he, he shot the track to uh, to three stacks before everything was done. He was like, I need something for this album. And three was like, man, I don't know. It don't sit right. He was like, man, just do your part and then we'll put everything else in it and then I'll I'll send it back to you. Because they said Dre wasn't feeling it at first and then was like, oh, I didn't know you was going to do that. He was like, oh, you got one with this one. <laughs> yeah. like, you got one because he, he, he let it off. But I guess he didn't hear how Mike was going to 
bring it home and with the, with everybody the singer. else. Yeah, He's with, like the singing. with the singer. And yes. even appreciating how Future jumped on it. He didn't Here know he was disco. putting all that on there. Yeah. He thought it was just going to be the guys. He heard the, the choir and everything else. He was like, oh, oh. Kind of like, thank you for even, you know, thinking about, you know, throwing me on this joint or whatever. He's like, God dang, th- yeah, you got one. He told him you got one. And sure as shit, he got them all, you know, as, as far as awards or whatever. But that song is just so, it, it's so outcasty. It ain't even funny. Like, it's so not even, it's not even yeah. present. It's so far ahead of itself. It's not even funny. And he's continuing that legacy of the the Dungeon family and all that to the fullest with the, with just that song alone. But yeah, man. Shout out to Mike. The, Shout out to Mike orchestra. and once and once again, rest in peace, Rico Wade, Definitely. for just creating those types of sonics and putting that kind of sonic imprint on a collective of individuals as and well goes, as on that project. You know, and what it I'm goes saying? back to your point about different areas in their sound because they created their own sound. That sound is nobody's touching the Dungeon Family sound. When they had their run, it was completely different. You know, and it's like you said, it's it's regional, but yet everybody can relate to it. It's regional, but you're like, oh shit, yeah, that's that's them boys. We know who that is, you know, but yet everybody still feel it. Um, what what's funny with Rico, Mike, and everybody's influence on things, we once again that same conversation, we we're talking about how much the new west is touched by <laughs> that sound. <laughs> Like that yeah. deeply emotional, soulful kind of dissonant sound that they put out there that makes you literally feel something, even if there's no lyrics on it. Mm-hmm. And you can hear that thumbprint all across a lot of folks because we we're revisiting. Um, I said we're going to jump off. We're going to jump off because I'm continue to have that hashtag. Thanks, Kenny, on it. The space that having a lyricist beat up a pop star in that manner allows for the lane of we can hear about this stuff versus hearing about the traffic. Um, That 90059 joint that um, J-Rock dropped, to me, that sounded like a new Equimini or or Atlians when Mm -hmm. he dropped that album, but there was so much noise around, so much BS at the time. I don't think people really got to sit back and appreciate how deeply emotional and portrait painting that album was kind of like how killer Mike with this Michael album and stuff is this is this, this is a new Renaissance of no, no, everybody when he got them Grammys was talking about, Oh, what about Travis? What about this? What about it, man? This album has (laughs) a sonic substance to it. This is not, this ain't your young boys hip hop right here. That's this what is, goes over their is, head. It's it, a complete body of work. They don't get that. It's a body of work. They don't understand that concept. And, and back to you, I, I don't want to leave this whole West Coast thing because yeah. I just saw, I don't know if I sent it to the group or if I just sent it to a couple of interviews. I can't remember, but somebody said it may be in the works that Not Like Us remix with TDE and Snoop. Bro, that's game. That's Come on, while you were talking about, you know, the TDE click, the remix of that, it was like, man, please time out. Stop, stop, man, y'all. The West Coast is completely active. We get it, you know, and I just sent something to the chat with that new Warren G and Snoop. <laughs> man, Dude, it's going to be a great summer, man. It's summer, for music, is about, man. summer is about to be ignorant. Like I said, that Vince came out, man. See that um, yeah. that Blue Lips is still Blue ringing Lips. off. Yes, and that was a sonic adventure right there. Like I keep going back and I keep finding something else to either love or get mad about. And when I say mm-hmm. get mad, it's not get mad because it's not good. It's you get mad because it it's like mm-hmm. it's get mad because like oh, could you give me a remix? Could you give me a remix with that part extended over there and some more verses on that part of it? Yeah. Like I'm really waiting because TDE is the king of the is one of those groups is the, one of those collectives is king of the deluxe version of the album. Yep. Where it's like, oh, okay, because um, what that soccer was that soccer dad 
was not on was not on blue lips it's like okay so can i get soccer dad and an extended version of this joint here with a black hippie remix over top of this part of the beat over here you know we we ain't gonna be mad at you if you bring it out man you know like any that's, day now that's I, I, I keep like, i keep man, hopping back on my streaming service waiting <laughs> that's why i was like man please don't put that because somebody was saying if this happens i was like please don't let that happen because it ain't gonna be safe for a certain somebody to come to the coast you he know, already so. sold the houses. It's already good. He already sold the houses. <laughs> the, the, so the first two are sold. The yeah, first two are like, sold. The third one is uh, the third one is on the market. So he he's bruh, officially bowed out. Bro, it's a wrap. This yeah, man. I, I saw that and was just like, man, the potential, the whole TDE black hippie family, and oh man, and Uncle Snoop just for shits and giggles because he, you know, is Snoop, you know, and uh yeah, that's just <laughs> Corrupt, corrupt finally heard not like us and was up there losing his mind. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, he was like, man, that's different. <laughs> He's like, shit, I ain't got no, I ain't got no, uh, no, 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 nothing in the game on this one. But uh, yeah, that's 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 that's, that's raw. That's raw as hell. But uh, yeah, man, shout out to Mike. Shout out to the uh, harmonic, and uh, yeah, man, I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing more. Hopefully, yeah. All right, now we go into. <laughs> yeah, man, Cameron doing the most Cameron shit. You know, that's what he does. I, I don't know whether to say fuck you, Cameron, or fuck you, CNN. Because CNN, CNN has been up there doing this gaffe as of recently, popping up Drewski on there. Mm. Um for I didn't see talk that. about didn't see yeah that. they've been they've been on this popping influencers in thing okay. to talk about certain stuff recently okay. so drewski has been on there a couple times talking about stocks and all this other stuff it's like dude what are you what are, what are you doing you don't you know these cats are okay so you just want to fuck with us and have the most niggas of niggas up on stuff man you don't mm -hmm. there's plenty of influencers with something to say that can be powerful, impactful, and actually show that we have powerful young thinkers. And when I say young, I'm saying 50 and under. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to go and grab Cornell West anymore. No, no diss about him. You know what I'm saying? Anything like that. You don't have, I understand y'all don't fuck with Mark Lamont Hill anymore. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to go grab him, but we have powerful political financially savvy deep thinkers that mm -hmm. you can go grab for things that are going all the way into their early 20s and everything like that that could say something that's just like oh okay this meant something yeah we have great debaters i will admit i didn't prep to give a list of who they could have grabbed i mean hell y'all could go grab most deaf most deaf has been like really bringing stuff out there on deep ends of things that's like whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but this we, ties into what we were just talking about. Uh, this ties but, into them not being able to appreciate somebody like Mike getting a nod for, you know, the, the whole live orchestra. You know, yeah. they, they only see goofy shit that they put on CNN and be like, you know, why the hell I will, you know, pay attention to these guys with a live band? Yeah. Because, you, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's it, just one of those situations where it highlights, you know, the lack of showing the, the positive side, you know, it's yeah. always they want to show the fuck shit. They want to give the prime time to to do what's doing the most. They, they got the one that was going to give you the fuckiest <laughs> of the shit. <laughs> and he told y'all for, you know, for context, folks, we talk about the CNN Cameron interview that just went crazy. And uh, talking yeah. about, but. first of all, you had Mr. Don't Snitch. <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> it, it, it take you. It takes three video searches, and it's not about the podcast. Three video searches. See what he did on Fox News. See what he did everywhere else and be like, this ain't the cat to get. And I understand what happened. What y'all did was y'all sent out the request to Mace, and Mace was like, not speaking on it. And look, I got an and somebody, NBA around yeah. getting my publishing back. And somebody, like, so somebody I'm going to throw the ball. Cam. I'm going to throw the ball to Cam. And they was yeah. like, well, Cam is Mace's boy, so maybe he'll speak on it. And Cam did what he's. I actually thought he did exactly what he was supposed to do once he realized they was on some fuck shit. All they wanted to do was talk about the Diddy stuff. And he was like, 
So y'all really don't know who the fuck I am. I went the other route. I was never signed to Bad Boy. You know what I'm saying? I was with, you know, Rock, you know, Rockefeller and them cats or whatever. I, and he was trying to explain it to him. He was like, I don't really have a, you know, a history with a dude like that. I don't know him. And what he did was wrong or whatever. But I, you know, you got the wrong dude considering how close him and Mace is. It was like, do y'all even know who I am? And he was like, did y'all not? He even said, did y'all not see my interviews with uh, Bill O'Reilly? And the rest of those cats where he flipped the script on them too. So I get it's, it. Here goes the whole thing. You can make your point and not have a nigga moment. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you, you can't do, there, you can't do that with killer. You can't no, do that look, with look, killer, man. Go ahead. And, and like I said, I know <clears throat> who we got. Look, yeah. we, we have been hanging for years. We know the homeboys you bring out. We know the homeboys you don't bring out. That we part. know the reason why you bring certain homeboys out. Shout that out to part. y'all. Y'all know who y'all are. Y'all exactly. know why y'all we don't, are. We don't name drop. We protect we don't the guilty. Drop. <laughs> <Go ahead>. Exactly. <laughs> but y'all know in this scenario right there, we ain't putting nobody on blast on Front Street, but we, mm -hmm. we got homeboys that's like, if you see them with us, and it's not just an ordinary crew hang day. Yep. You might you might know hands is gonna get thrown. Yeah, you might here's... know somebody gonna get cussed out or get fronted out. Mm -hmm. You might know somebody's gonna get clowned because you see certain faces. Mm -hmm. You on the other on the other hand, no certain faces. You could have brought fifty up here, and fifty wouldn't have taken it there. No, nah, I mean it was. You know what I mean? The it's... reason why I dug the interview because he he saw what was going on, and then he said, you know what? Let me turn up a little bit. Start plugging his own male enhancement shit. You know, Come that on, pink man. horse. You know, man, also, I'm gonna you know, some, I'm, I'm gonna get, shit. I'm gonna get some cheeks after this. Yes. Come on, man. <laughs> Come, Come on. on. That's what it is, you know. And uh, it, yeah, most, it was you... the most boondoxian. <laughs> <laughs> I went there, made up a third. It was the most boondoxian of bullshit that he could have pulled. I was, I understand that we are not a monolith and that. Part. that mm -hmm. Just like we, just like at the beginning of 3 p.m.D. is like whatever comes out of everybody else's mouth does not represent. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Br brother, brother, brother Eddie, you know what I'm we, saying? We're playing with that, but we're not because but, that's what it is. We, we play with it, but that's, that's what it is. Go ahead. It's like, come on, man. Is the only way it could have been worse is like I said, it was bad enough as on CNN. If it would have been bad if it was on, you know, any other news outlet. Mm -hmm. But I think the only place it could have been worse if it was on Al Jazeera, where it's just broadcast <laughs> around the world like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean CNN is. I mean, dude, it's worldwide. Is, it's yeah, worldwide, everything. but yeah. certain people kind of certain people tune out CNN like they tune out Fox News. It's right. like, like, yeah. but you heard much, about it. But everybody you talking. It, yeah. You heard about it. So, I it's as much as it is global, it isn't global because of the slants for the network. Mm -hmm. But like I look at it, Al Jazeera globally, not yeah. not stateside. I look at it globally, like oh, mm -hmm. that would have been the worst look ever. Because it's just like you'd have had people over in Iran, in Iran. You'd have had people over in Scotland up there talking about. Did you see? But that are American you? Brother? But are you really surprised? Seriously. No, I've been, like I said, <laughs> that's what that's what, it, that's what it, the faces that pop up. And look, hey, <laughs> hey, we mm -hmm. are not going to put sauce on bread on the view. <laughs> <laughs> shout, out, shout out to the brother sauce on bread. We are not going to put sauce on bread on the view. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. But yeah, that's 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 what I'm saying. Or red that table was the talk. Most... Look, look, sauce yeah. on bread or bread yeah. on the next red table. Nah, <laughs> nah, we can't do that. Uh, yeah, Cam is he did what Cam does, you know, Mr. Chicken and Fries. You know, that's him. That's Cam all day. And I just sat back and was like, get them, Cam. Get them. Do what you do what you're supposed to do because they on some fuck shit. You know, yeah. kept asking the question. He's kind of like, you know, trying to curb them. And they was like, uh, well, so and you know, kept trying to do follow-up questions on the same thing. And he was like, Look, damn it, that's Mace. That ain't me. You don't see me in a video with dude. You know, I don't know him like that. You know, that was my guy's guy. The, the only thing I will give him props for is knowing how petty he is, knowing yeah. how petty he is, and know how he keeps a grudge. Yeah. He didn't flip it on Jigga Man. He, he didn't be yeah. like, if you yeah. want to ask me about Jay, Jay. Yeah. if you want to ask me about yeah. Jay, 
Yeah, I which y'all should be thing. doing. Y'all should be interviewing Jay about him because that's his man, you know, rolling him over, you yeah, know, that he, way. But uh, I, I, now that's the one point, like, he, he did not go out full cam petty. Right. Because boy, oh boy, I could see him doing it. But, but yeah. They, they, they tried and failed. You know, and uh, Cam <laughs> got the best of it. He got free, he got free uh, publicity, and you know he uh, dropped, you know, his shit on his uh, pink horse, his uh, diplomat shit, and uh, yeah, and I think he plugged the show too. Yeah, he plugged yeah, his he plugged uh, pockets. <laughs> He's like, but if you really want to know what I talk about, how I feel about certain things, you know, my show comes on in. Yeah, yeah, ultimate hustler, man. That was a nice move. What's that was funny a good is, move. What what's funny is. As much as wild and as loose can as he is, they would have had a better situation bringing Joe on there. Mm. Joe would have discussed it in a manner where even not incriminating anybody, not putting a finger on the pulse or whatever, mm -hmm. would have discussed it in an adult manner where one, he would have still got all his plugs off. Yeah. Would have still would have still rocked with it and still would have been like, hey, from the out from looking at it externally, this is where and that's all it is, is it's just like, as you've now changed yourself into a media figure, going into this podcast space, going into this influencer space, I, like I said, I have, nobody's telling you drop the hammer on anybody, because we've had situations where you and I have touched subjects where it's like, okay, I'm not going all the way in on this. You've been like, yep. I'm not going all the way in on this, yep. whether it's a case of we don't we don't subscribe to a certain community or behavior so we right. can't truly speak on it or right. whatever it is the fact of the matter is it's like you can still speak about things objectively because you have bothered to sit behind these microphones and turn these cameras on and doing those you are no longer just a street dude if that's what your persona is right. you're no longer just a rapper if that's what your persona or producer if that's what your persona is you've now become a media figure and being a media figure you have to you could put your slant on it you could approach it in your own way but mm -hmm. now it is a responsibility to your craft to approach it in a certain manner and to grow your craft you know what i'm saying it's like all right Maybe he is taking the Howard Stern approach of like, oh, I'm just going to be edgy <laughs> everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you know what you get when you get there. And I know that's what it was. And that is Cam. Yeah. But yeah. even <clears throat> with, with that type of rock, um, going with that type of rock, it's like, okay, that's what you're doing. Respect it is what it is. You still have to have some type of feel of, oh, I can really punch you on the face. You can be the next Joe Rogan from a hood perspective if you kept some type of integrity behind it like okay i'm gonna approach it so outside of it and word it to where what was it um i was listening to that mac Hami project all right mm -hmm. and mac Hami is a straight up and down street dude but he's also a haitian and on his projects, he talks about the climate and stuff going on in Haiti. And my man was speaking on the climate of the political um, environment going on in Haiti right now. He threw a statement down. His homeboy's up there's like, the fuck kind of words you use it, man? You a, you a thug, nigga. What you talking about <laughs> this shit? Going to throw these words at me. Shut the fuck up. And that's on the album. But it's like, home, and homeboy was right in his standpoint in what the world building that he was doing in his statement. You can be that person and still flip the script on it to where somebody's like, oh, shit, you're powerful. They, you know said, what I'm they, they knew what they were doing because yeah. <clears throat> if they would have had Mace on there, it wouldn't have went that way. It would have been exactly what you just described. Mace would have slow walked in and be like, hey, look, you know, uh, it is what it is. Uh, this is a situation that you could make your own judgment on that video of Puff doing what he did with Cassie. And uh, mm -hmm. that's that's just your opinion. But. You know, Cam gonna put that that sauce on it, and um, that's what he did, and they got the ratings for it. You know, ain't nobody been talking about CNN for I felt, a minute. You know, I so felt, I felt worse for the sister that had the interview because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. I don't know. I don't watch CNN enough. I used to watch CNN daily, and mm. CNN kind of was like my background sports center, my ESPN, where you just leave it up, and as my mm -hmm. white noise. And you know, I catch something I see was so I knew what anchors was on bullshit, what anchors was cool, 
which ones deserve the shit they got, which pundits and everybody else that came on there that was assholes or whatever. I don't know her to be on bullshit to be like, she deserves that. Cause right. if I think if I believe that used to, she used to be a street correspondent that they used to always like have out in the middle of the shit. Mm-hmm. And she was quite responsible in how she handled things. So if that is who I think it is, she ain't deserve that shit, man. And so she, like, she earned her she earned her check. So mm-hmm. she earned, oh, she all day. Earned, she earned her all check day. that day. So I know because the way she was doing the question was like, I have to ask these fucking they in my ear. I have to ask these fucking she's, she's stupid like, ass questions. She's like, I know who this dude is. She's like, I know I who this she's like, right. I know who the fuck he is. <laughs> right. It was like, God, hey, I don't man. Damn it. Oh, here we go. Dude. So, Cam, how do you feel about you know? And that's how she was coming across. Like, fuck, you know, yeah, I get a chance to interview this dude. I don't want to, I want to see if he got a new uh pink Range Rover, you know, a 2024. That's what I want to know. I don't want to talk about Diddy shit, you know. But anyway, that's... she she was she was running down the list in her head. She's like, so y'all couldn't have got killer Mike for this one. Y'all couldn't have got killer Mike for this one. <laughs> I heard most deaf was taking interviews. Y'all couldn't have got him like any other yeah. any other rapper but him. We're Snoop. Yeah, We're that's Snoop. what I said, man. She earned her check, and I feel bad for the sister that she had to go through that. But now, you know, she's being talked about on you know Dirty Thirty. You're famous yeah. now, kid. You're famous. <laughs> yeah, it's it's wild, man. Because it's 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 them nights. Hey, we I always like the sports analogy for stuff. Some days you get it to go out there and rock it, just do your thing, and then the next week you the shooting guard that got a guard step. You the point guard that got a guard Steph Curry. Oh, like, nice. really? This yeah. motherfucker's gonna pull up for the half court line. I gotta. Go. Yeah. And he run around too damn much. Yeah. Oh, I really gotta earn this tip. You know I'm on a vet minimum, right? <laughs> you know I'm on a vet minimum. I don't do this much running, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. And Draymond uh-huh. is setting the legal screens. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you again for another one. Uh, definitely, definitely. Shout out you. to Schwabel Room crew, everybody involved. Thank you to my peoples. Make sure you're checking up on them. Thank you to the subscribers and the constant commenters. And I've been seeing more and more commenting. YouTube, y'all need to quit playing with the shadow band. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all need to quit yeah, playing. For real. Yeah, we, we, uh, we got we got comments on videos that ain't got no views. I'm just putting that out there. There uh, you go. They, they, I, there you go. Yeah, y'all need to quit playing. Y'all know we bigger than y'all know we bigger than this. Quit playing mm-hmm. with us. Mm-hmm. We out here. We out here hitting them in the face. But yeah. um, yeah. Shout out to everybody to keep rolling with us. We appreciate y'all. Shout out to the rest of my family, cousin Eddie, sauce on brand, old man yeah. Ali. Yes, sir. You know Jay Drews. Um, my man, my man, handsome Mandela hit me up, said he's back, uh, he's back up off of IR. So he going to have right. more stuff coming out. Goldtron is coming back on like that. Black Sun Shaman, you know, we going to keep doing our thing. Me and handsome Mandela going to get down. Just shout out to everybody. 3 PM D Kiki. Hey man, just keep, keep watching what we got going on, man. We here for y'all. Keep hitting us with the suggestions, getting the comments on like that. Let us know what's going on. We here for y'all. We appreciate y'all. That's another one in the bag. So we're going to get out of here and peace.